the system is failing. We're going to have more homelessness, more unemployment, and the government has to print more money. It's a command and control economy where the government tells you everything. I just don't trust our government. You know, and they're going to have to start printing pretty quickly. And the more they print, the less value purchasing power the dollar has, or the loonie, or the yen, or the peso. People are talking about inflation. I think we're in depression right now, and we're going to be a biggest depression in world history. In the 1970s, that's when the world was changing. The biggest bust in the history of the world is coming up. It's pensions. They trusted the government. They trusted their pension would be there, and it's going to go bust. And that's us. We get crushed. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Bearable Bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. As guys, we're going to start off this video with building a case that the crypto bottom may in fact be in. Now let me make myself clear. I still have cash on the side ready to buy any and all crashes. But it is very possible that the bottom may be in already. And when we remember these entry points at the moment, I do believe they are life changing relative to what these cryptos will be worth in two, three, four, five years from now. Guys, these are the times when you accumulate. And I'm going to start off this video with a quick clip from Raul Paul echoing similar sentiment. Please take a listen and then let's dive into the contents for the day. I think everybody's trying to test whether the low is in in crypto, and I actually think it is. Look, there's a chance that it has one more sell-off, but I think all the conditions are in place, how oversold it got, the liquidation from three hours capital, and the kind of despondency in the, in the, in the place where everybody thinks Bitcoin goes lower to 10,000, is the signs of a bottom. I'm looking at the price action. Some of these tokens are up 100% from the low. Now, this isn't the time to FOMO in. It's not the time to just buy because you can't, get another chance. Normally, you know, with the kind of resistance of Ethereum, you know, around 1800, it should, that was the blows of the previous sell-off. There's a lot of resistance there. It can take time to clear that. Now, it either sharply corrects and kind of retests the low, which is not my base case, or it trades sideways for a bit and gathers strength by just calming down. And then as it breaks higher, then it forces people in. From what I can tell, most of the crypto market participants are underweight right now. That's the crypto hedge funds and people like that. And I know there's a lot of money on the sidelines in stable coins. So listen, I've been expecting this turn for a while. I think the macro is going to be very supporting. I think bond yields will be coming down and that will end up allowing crypto to start rising again. So listen, I think it's all to play for in the second half. Good luck. Now, ladies and gentlemen, considering what Raul Paul said, there is still no confirmation that this is in fact the bottom and I will be prepared with a cash position in case we go lower. However, I have to say that due to the current events that are happening in the crypto market right now, I think and I'm preparing for bullish momentum. Right now, I purchased a Goliath of a crypto I think is going to explode in value relatively soon due to the fact that crypto is changing forever. The crypto I'm mass accumulating right now. I'm posting in my OnlyFans down in the description below. And yes, I do think this could be a time sensitive buy. I think it'll be a great entry point for all of you. And highly consider taking a look at it. In addition, down in the description below. I'm also posting my updated portfolio. That will be lecture 15 in Udemy down in the description below. And for all of you that aren't in there already, there's 10 hours worth of content ready for your disposal, regardless of what you choose. I highly recommend you guys stay up to date. Now let's try and build on this potentially being the bottom and continue to build a case that we've already seen the worst. Blockchain backer posted a thread the other day stating, I discuss how the current levels of Bitcoin's price represents a pretty important place. As the video was recorded, Bitcoin was at 19.7. As the day progressed, it sat at around $20,500. But we see similarities emerging on Bitcoin. 
Most would call this a bare flag. And we see the same structure over there on Ethereum, which has poked its mystical head back above. But ladies and gentlemen, the point that's trying to be made is that most people still to this day expect a breakdown to a lower direction. I'm personally beginning to get more and more bullish on this market. And while I'm staying relatively tamed and I'm prepared for any scenario, you guys have to start looking for a bottom as well. I can't say with definitive conviction it won't break down, but I wanted to show that even though the short term price action looks bearish, the current level that these prices are at does not say that. And a break seems like it was actually have bigger consequences than just another leg down. This is very possible. This is just an epic support level. And it's something you guys all need to keep in mind. Backer then goes on to discuss during the C19 sell-off. How most people expected us to keep dropping, but we didn't. We didn't close gaps. And it may be possible that we are in a similar scenario. Unlike different times in the market. I'm staying relatively tamed with my emotions. And very strategic with how I place my bets. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say this right now. We have not had an altcoin season yet. Bitcoin and Ether seem to be relatively sluggish. There is no one in the crypto market calling for anything even close to an altcoin season. And that's why me right now, I can't help but feel like it might just sneak up on us. A nice little mini alt run snuck behind low ETH and Bitcoin prices. Of course, I do expect some more positive price action and more positive momentum is needed to really see that. But the point I'm trying to make is don't be shocked to see alts running on their own for a little while if we continue to get a gradual rise in prices. This is where an altcoin season would happen. And I need you all to anticipate that. Especially considering how low these altcoin prices are. This is where institutions come in and accumulate. This is where the wealthy begin their stash. Have the wealth building mindset. And throw away the fear of a retail investor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, we have an interesting development from the SEC that occurred last week. SEC Commissioner Allison Lee stepped down. Allison Lee was anti-crypto. And by that, I mean had a more negative crypto stance as an SEC Commissioner. My question to all of you in the XRP Army is, how many more SEC officials and commissioners need to step down before you guys really understand what's been going on? People do not believe in Gary Gunsler and this SEC administration. That is incredible. We've had so many people quit. That, to me, signals the dysfunction happening within the SEC. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, Hester Pierce has openly promoted the crypto safe harbor proposal where every crypto has a few years to get everything in a row and not be considered a security. We promote innovation and don't try to regulate by enforcement. Guys, what's so frustrating for me to see as how open-ended and corrupt the SEC has been this entire time. The SEC has its little puppets in the crypto space as well. Remember yesterday, Chief Legal Officer for Coinbase, the largest exchange to delist XRP because of this SEC Ripple lawsuit, has stated, We 100% disagree with the SEC's assertion that any of the crypto assets we list are securities. Ladies and gentlemen, Coinbase has been pissing me off recently. The SEC has stated verbatim nine cryptos listed on Coinbase or securities. And Coinbase has done nothing. They did not delist these coins. In fact, they're continuing to trade with no announcement. But you better believe immediately after that lawsuit against Ripple was filed. 
exchanges in mass delisted XRP. I wonder why XRP has been given such special treatment. XRP is so hated amongst the crypto industry that they all coordinated this attack against retail being able to purchase our favorite digital asset. It's days like today that piss me off because on one hand, while Coinbase is caught with this hypocrisy towards the XRP army, we see that Coinbase, someone who formerly worked at Coinbase, got caught yesterday for insider trading. Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Corruption behind the scenes is being exposed. I've spoken negatively about Coinbase over the past couple days and regardless of what happens, that's not the point. The point is, we in the XRP community have been uncovering all this behind the scenes corruption for a long time. And more and more, day by day, the corruption is slowly coming out to the forefront. It's clear to me that the SEC cares more about delaying the outcome of this Ripple case than the outcome itself. That's why they're attacking crypto on multiple fronts, library, Coinbase, and other tokens. They don't want a loss against Ripple before they can score another win somewhere else. And ladies and gentlemen, that's an incredible point that was made. The SEC is trying to win by all means necessary as much jurisdiction over the crypto industry as possible. But what's going on is they know they can against Ripple. They're taking their time, delay and delay, so they can maybe prey on some of the smaller crypto companies. But something tells me this case may end abruptly when things are finally about to get settled. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, you can underscore how remarkable it is for a CFTC commissioner to call out a fellow regulator like this. Right here, guys, it discusses how the SEC's allegations could have broad implications beyond the single case. The CFTC state's regulatory clarity comes from being out in the open, not in the dark. And guys, this is the regulatory turf war we've been discussing for a long time. Shots are being fired amongst U.S. regulators as we speak. And the SEC has been found guilty, even amongst their own, for all charges. But what else is interesting from JTXRP is this video from Fox Business discussing how they're expecting to see legislative text on stablecoins imminently, potentially within the next couple hours or maybe by tomorrow. We still have to see this actually play out. But my opinion is that once we get some more regulation in this space, the trillions upon trillions of dollars we all expect to flood into this market will. We will get the run we finally deserve. The bottom may be in. But if you're my permeable, you know how I play it. I have capital on the side just in case, but I'm already balls deep in the crypto market for when we finally take off. We make profits on the way up and we get life changing entry points and become extremely rich on the way down. Moments like this are where we end up in the history books. And I hope all of you have been taken advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Bearable Bull here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Another point you've made, and this is, I think, particularly relevant 10 years into a bull market, is that I think you said more money has been lost anticipating a downturn than actually in the downturn. Can you explain? Well, obviously, the market's, market's gone up tenfold since I stopped running Magellan. So you make more money on the upside. The market's going to be a lot higher 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. Trying to predict the market is really a waste. I don't know what it's going to do. It can go down 
when I ran Magellan, 13 years, it declined 10% or more, nine times the market. Wow. I had a perfect record. I went down more than 10% every time. Whatever the market went down, I went down more. But over the long term, the upside is more than the downside. So you're going to say to yourself, do I need the money in the next month? Do I need the money in the next year? Do I have kids going to college? Do I have a wedding coming up? Then you're a bad investor. If you, if you, if you can keep putting money in, you have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 year, you should do well.